There we go. Okay, I'm ready. We're live. <laughs> and we're live. Hi, hi, Ivana. How are you? How's it going? Yes. Good. Yes. How are you? Good. Just super busy down here in Dallas. I saw that you guys got to go shoot with Branch, and I saw some race car stuff. Oh, yes. Always we had so much fun. Branch is amazing. He's a good human. Great. This is super professional stuff we're doing here. Yeah, I mean, I'm on the porch of an Airbnb right now. <laughs> I don't even have good enough internet here. I have to use my Wi-Fi. Brayden, I can't hear you. Yeah, I haven't heard you yet, Brayden. I just thought he wasn't talking. I thought it was only right if I if I wore the uh, Hell yeah. red walking shirt. This thing's blew up, man. I was happy about that. Yeah. Uh, I know they sold out immediately because Braden had to wait a couple weeks to get his. <laughs> he jumped on it. <laughs> it went from a few days to a few weeks. But, yeah, I don't think they were expecting that. And so Jordan had to order a bunch of extra short shirts. That's good, though. That's a good problem to have. All right. Now can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Got you. Apparently, you have to plug shit in. Yeah, that, I mean, that helps. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just I'm just using the uh, the uh, AirPods or whatever. You seem to do a good enough job. How's it going, man? I'm good. I'm really good. Um, one thing. One thing. Hey, babe. Come on. Come on. You need me. I have some new scenery. I know. Oh, kids here. Say it's, uh, it looks a little different. I have no kids here today, so I can put my stuff wherever I want. I don't have to hide in my bedroom. Oh, shit. There. All right, guys. I'm all better. All right, I'm, good? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm all good. Good. Well, welcome to episode four. Episode we got to, four. Uh, we're big time now, man. Big time. Who was the first? You're, who was the first three? You're the first guest. The first guess it was just yeah. you guys bullshitting the first yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to them. They're terrible. <laughs> this better yeah. turn off so I can say I was the first guest ever on this show. Deal. Deal. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but hey, deal. See what we can do. Well, hey man, you've had you've had quite the hell of a year, right? So we might as well uh, we might as well jump right in. I mean, I know for us two anyway, we're not really all that surprised. And that's in like a good way. Like we we expected, you know. Obviously, we've seen your your come up and everything. It's been wild to watch. But why don't you uh, come and give us a little bit of an intro? I know a lot of our viewers are probably pretty new to the the sport. Um, a lot of them are kind of our clients and stuff like that. So why don't you give a little intro, at least on you and kind of where you got started and how this how this has come to be? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, what's cool about this podcast and why I agreed to come on here is because like. You know, both of you two have been a part of, you know, my my journey through this bodybuilding experience and, you know, from the very beginning. So, you know, I was also a, a Midwest boy. I was uh, lived in Iowa, so right below you guys. And, you know, one of the first kind of bodybuilders I met was actually Cole. You know, I started going to the events with my wife because she was um, she competed professionally. And so, you know, I was fortunate enough to like kind of tag along at the time yeah. when, you know, I was much smaller um, going to events. And so I met Cole at... Uh, and it was that Arnold, what was that, probably 16 or 17? I think, I think it was 15. 15, yeah, yeah. We went in real early because that was right at the beginning. So, yeah, 15 or 16. Um, and, you know, really just hit it off. And, like, that was kind of my first experience of, like, you know, because, I, 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 you know, we all played sports growing up. And we were, like, you know, involved with, the, you know, strength training. And, you know, we thought we knew nutrition. Oh, yeah. And I even <laughs> studied it in college. Um, you know, but when I got done with that, like, I decided to want to do my own bodybuilding and kind of just, was, you know, did what I thought was right but then it wasn't really until like you know I, I would learn a little bit from Yvonne and her brother but 
I remember, you know, going and doing that event at the Arnold with Cole and we worked, that's when we like helped out at a tainted industries booth. Yep. And we were all young, you know, fresh out, you know, fresh <laughs> into this. And I just noticed like Cole always had his food with him. He's like, he'd be eating during this, like, you know, we're working work in the booth. I look over, he's eating another meal. I'm like, what are you, what are you cold doing? shit, man. He just ate like an hour and a half ago. Like, you know, so it was, it was, it was, it was cool to see like, the thing is that's how you level up, you know, in the, in this sport. And you like, you know, you learn from those around you, you learn from those that have been doing the sport or been doing that lifestyle um, before you and how, and you can see how it's been successful because he was a big boy at the time. And, you know, that kind of really like kind of clicked with me, you know, when I, we kind of went back to Iowa and I was like, you know, I need to eat more. I need to be more prepared, you know? And so that's kind of what really launched me in regards to like, I know there's so many more steps to this journey. Do you know if I want to be, if I really want to buy into this bodybuilding thing and like, I need to start acting like that. And like, cause that's what, what it takes, you know, you know, we all learn it. Sometimes we learn it too late, but like the, the food aspect of what we do, you know, is just, you know, being prepared all the time, always, you know, thinking of ahead, getting things ready, always cooking. Like, you don't, you don't, you don't realize how important that is until you start seeing the progress and know that that's the only way you're going to continue to progress. So that was a nice kick in the butt and kind of, you know, launched me that way um with Braden I was lucky enough to you know to coach him um I mean this was years later like that Cole was the very very first early one thank you um but you know with Braden you know I, I was able to see him come up in his competing you know I helped him do his first couple national shows and we you know he got better every single time um and then he was able to move on the interview and turn pro so I've seen his journey as well as like you know while we were you know while I was coaching him and getting him ready for his shows and and his progress, you know, he got to, you know, be part of mine and watch mine and support me as well. So, yeah. like I said, that was the first thing I wanted to talk about is just how, you know, we kind of all intertwined here. And, you know, that's right. why very, very good at, you know, you know, keeping my circle tight and then, like, being involved with those people. And, you know, so, so like, these people that helped me come up, you know, I never, I never will forget that. You know, me and Cole talk shit. We talk more than we probably did, you know, the years ahead, you know, but, like, I talk to him at least every other day on Messenger and stuff like that. And so I know these are good people and that's who I want to surround myself. And I want to, you know, I want to keep these people like you guys in my, in my circle as I continue to progress up, you know, to the, you know, to the Mr. Olympia stage, yeah. to the, you know, being the top athlete in the world. Um, Cause that's what got me here. And that's what it's going to continue to get me to the top. Um, and so, like I said, I just want to say, you know, I appreciate you guys um, have they been in the ride. And like I said, I've enjoyed watching your journeys as well. And I know there's so much more for you and, I, I give oh, yeah. I give bullshit all the time because he should be a pro right now from Super <laughs> from a couple weeks ago. You but, can but, take that up with Matt. <laughs> <laughs> coming and I'm excited to see that, and then excited to see Braden do his thing on the on the pro stage next. So yeah. I, it's really cool that we can you know we've got to these points and you know with Braden it's, it's kind of it's it's funny to think of because I remember even like with Braden like you know we all go through that phase if like we don't know if we're gonna buy all in. You know what I mean? Like, because yep. you got to make that choice. If you're going to be a pro, you know, if you're going to fight for that, you have to like, you have to make that lifestyle choice and you got to make all those, those choices in your life on how you set it up, you know, your, your relationship status, things like that. You know, if, if you want to be, if you want to go for that pro card and buy full it. So I remember like, you know, he, you know, he didn't take, you know, maybe his off season were as serious as they obviously are now, but like yeah. we're seeing that transition to seeing him go full in. And, you know, it's really cool to see somebody do that and then get rewarded for it as well. So, you know, we all went through that right. phase. But I was actually, a, you know, a, a part of Braden's phase yeah. in that. A big part. I was a part of my phase in that. And so, like, it's cool to kind of just keep passing it forward and then, you know, staying in, kind of, you know, connection that way. Well, even you know, for that on my end, too, like, when I started working with you, I mean, I only met you through Cole. You know, when yeah. you, came, you came up for a workout and we're at, you know, Edge the Fitness back edge in the fitness. day, yeah. You know, and we posed afterwards, and I was getting ready for a show, and it was just like, "Hey, man, like I, I vibed with this guy right away. Like I, like I watched him train. Like I get it. Like that's where I want to go." And like I didn't have, like you said, when I started with you, I didn't have that mindset. You know, like I had done one classic show for shits and giggles. You know, just just to do one. And when we started, I was kind of getting in shape for my wedding. You know, just to be truly honest, that was it. I don't and think you've done an off season at that point. No, never. And it was more of you had already turned pro and then you were getting ready to go for your 212 open. So I got to watch yeah. that. 
and then I got to watch you evolve, not only as an athlete, but then as a coach, you know, you started working with Matt and I got to see things change from an athlete perspective. And that's what forced me to kind of like buy in. Cause I was like, Oh shit, man, this dude's doing it and it's clearly working. So if I just do as he does, hopefully shit happens the same way for me. And that was, that was the switch was literally just emulating and watching, like you said, you know, finding people who are further along than you, like yourself, and just emulating, you know, just sit back, take notes, watch, listen, observe. And I mean, it got me to where I am. So it clearly there's, there's proof in the pudding with that. So my appreciation is to you for that. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, like, yeah it's been really cool just uh, seeing you take that leap this year because yeah. obviously we've all been watching and waiting and and uh, I mean you did it big so you, yeah. you want to go into the Chicago Pro and tell us how everything kind of went down there absolutely man I can't I can't I can't not talk enough, enough you know that so it's been fun down here because now you know running in like I'm currently in Dallas I've been here all week for you know some gas events and you know running into other athletes that like you know, they weren't expecting it too. And they were just like, holy shit, you know, and it's like, it's, you know, I gotta go from my side of the story and explain it and stuff like that. So, um, the main thing, you know, with the Chicago pro, it was, it was, you know, we, we knew what we could do, you know, in regards to like, we knew what kind of package we could bring in regards to like the conditioning side, the, the, the side that I think yeah. shocks people, like we, I mean, even you're you guys, always conditioned. Yeah, you knew I was always going to be conditioned. Even you know when I went pro in at classic, you know, I I ate away 15 pounds of muscle to make weight, and I was just fucking skinner. You know what I mean? So like, that's not the hard part for me. That's the part that like, you know, when we get closer to that that final day, like my mind is all about more conditioning. You know, it takes Matt. He need he like he may, he forces me not to do cardio. He forces me to go eat a burger <laughs> and fries. You know, I don't want to. So like, I'm always that. that I'm kind of that stubborn one. That like, I feel like I can always do more, but. Well, really, you know, what was cool about this prep is, like, I I really gave him the reins. And, like, because I knew, like, this is the first time I never had to make weight. So, it was it was a very interesting for me because I have a very different body type. Like, I, I can eat a lot. I know Cole gets mad about it. But, like, yeah. Yeah, I, want, I want some of that. <laughs> <laughs> my metabolism is crazy. My glutes are in it, like, 10 weeks out. So, like. You, your glutes are in all off season. Let's be real. <laughs> right. it's, a, it's about 270 years when they go away, I think. <laughs> no, I got I thank my parents for that one but um but yeah like being able to not have to make a weight was just a totally totally different prep so this was like a brand new experience for me again as well because there's a lot of like you know push for a few days but then we eat up you know because we're, we're we need to keep the size on um you know to make sure we're competitive but still you know obviously bring our little extra conditioning so it was really a big balancing act with matt you know just you know checking in every morning you've experienced that i know you guys both are with him he's extremely yep. good, you know, communicating you know, laying out the plan and then you just follow it. And then every morning, you know, you know, it could be something different. As you get closer to the show, you just, you, you show him what's up and he makes the, 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 the changes and you just follow it. And, you know, it's in, in what I've experienced, you know, as a coach and then also being around, you know, other athletes, especially this week is like, when you can fully just trust into somebody and let them have the reins on everything, it's such a benefit in your, in your competition side, you know, so I had no, no stress for this show. Like, and you guys remember seeing me on like Fuad's podcast a day out or something, you know, I'm, I'm sitting yeah, there. Man, you look relaxed. Yeah. You know, everyone's like, is he not, is he not dieted down? Like he's just, <laughs> he's full of energy. And I'm like, man, I, I love this process. And like, I, I can, you know, my backstory is I did 212, you know, two years ago, I was in the 212 division, which means I had to weigh 212 pounds or below in that bodybuilding category as a pro. Um, you know, at that time I, I, I competed, I got, I ended up getting sixth at, at Toronto Pro. And I, I knew that my potential was always going to be, I, I kept seeing that as the bigger I got, the better I looked. Yeah. And that's not the case with everybody, but like with me, you know, I just continued to see that. And even getting down to 212 was very, very difficult. Um, I still had to eat away some muscle. So like I knew, you know, I knew I made that decision. Like I'm not, I'm not so much chasing the place anymore or else, you know, I probably would have stayed in classic and tried to get, you know, to the Olympia that way. But I'm more so trying to chase a physique and just trying to chase my potential. Yeah. And I, so, I think you look better, bigger though. Yeah. So I, even in classic, I don't think you would have reached your full potential. I agree. No, I came back. I completely agree. Cause you wouldn't, I wouldn't have like the, the size of the legs, you know, the, the last sweep, things like that. Yeah. And that, so, that gives you your shape. Yep, yep. So it's like I said, to continue 
just get bigger and look better. So that's why I made this prep so much fun is because I knew I could keep the size. Um, but that was the underlying thing going into the show was, you know, we know we'll all condition them. I know I'll beat these guys from like the side shots. I'll beat them with my waist. I'll beat them with my glutes and hams. Um, but am I going to be big enough? Just because I don't know. You know, I just, yeah. I see myself in the mirror every morning. You know, I see myself, my training partner, who's a big boy as well. And I compare very well. It's just, what about like standing next to a Roy, standing next to a Hunter? So, yeah. you know, it was, I want to say doubt was there, but it was more so like, I just never I, done it before. Yeah, but I have nothing to lose. I, you know, no one's picking me to win this shit, so let's just go out and have some fun. <laughs> um, so, how, you know, now getting into the fun part of everything, you know, just flaw, honestly, man, flawless, flawless, like, leading into the show. The only issue I had was, like, the first night staying down there, um, you know, didn't get much sleep on that first night just because we got in late. I had, you know, got up early and, like, it was holding a bunch of water. Um, so that was the only time I was kind of a little bit stressed. And we literally just went across the street to a Planet Fitness. I sat in the sauna and I literally like watched probably about six pounds of water just melt off. Me. So did you gain weight on the, the plane ride then? Um, it was, it stayed about balanced, but it was just, I could just tell I was watery, you know? Okay. Um, and so we just started posing in the locker room. And by the time I was done with that, there's a puddle underneath me. And like everything was absolutely like, and we like kind of knew like, yeah, this is it, you know? So that's what really kind of, I think that session released not only like the water, but it released any cortisol I was even thinking about, you know, maybe having. Um, so it just made it so much smoother after that. And then, then it just kind of turned into a feeding fest kind of filling up. So yeah. That's, yeah, that's when we get into like, like I said, I'm a big eater and it takes a lot when I need to fill up. So we did a lot, a lot of cream of rice. Like every meal was, you know, almost, you know, 160 to 200 grams of cream of rice with like 40 grams of almond butter. And then obviously some, you know, protein sources there, chicken or beef. Um, that was, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday, and, you know, through Friday. So like thousand carb and carb days. Um, but, you know, that was just him watching me. You know, we were so diligent and I can't talk enough about, you know, mass professionalism. Like he wouldn't leave my side. Like he'd watch me eat every meal. And like one night, one night, it was like Thursday night, it was like midnight. And I'm like, dude, you can go to bed. Like I'm going <laughs> to eat meal and go to sleep. You don't need to watch me. He's like, no, I'm not, I'm not leaving your side because, we're doing it right now and you're on. So I need to make sure everything's perfect and know exactly what you're doing. And I'm like, and all I, that showed on stage. Yeah. yeah. That? All What's that, that showed on stage. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like just as, you know, just as care for his athletes and like, and you know, he, like he was just excited as me, like this being the open debut and being an underdog to like, Hey, this, you know, we can shock them. So once we started, I think I sent you guys, you know, I think I sent Cole a couple of the, you know, the, the, the hotel picks. So, you know, yeah. we knew that was coming. So fully relaxed, slept good every night after that, even into the show day. Um, and then, you know, then it was game on. So the, the moment, and then this is when I get into the fun part. So, you know, the, you know, coming out on stage, I knew, I knew that I was going to be standing next to Roley Winkler. Um, you know, first comparison, it always goes by last name. So me being Wilkin and Roley being Winkler, I knew, you know, for those first comparison rounds, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do the quarter turns and hit poses next to me. Um, so we get to that point, we come out, you know, right away, you know, hitting that, you know, and that's when I was still in that, you know, in that limbo of, do I compare to him? Let's do this. And then right getting into that front relax and then hit that first quarter turn, like hearing the crowd's reaction. Cause I know, you know, I know who was there for me. And like, by the time that, that first round got done, I think, you know, 90% of the building was there for me. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. You could hear it on the live stream. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so hard to explain, and that's why I'm glad I get to talk about this with you guys, is, like, that environment. And, like, one thing that will always sit with me now, because I just want to bring this up real quick, is, like, you know, John Meadows was there. And, you know, yeah. with his past this week, so I'll, yeah. I'll never yeah. I'll never forget this in the rest of my life. Um, you know, him him being there and then what his words after that show saying that that was the best bodybuilding show he's ever been to, um, not only just, you know, enjoying watching himself, but, like, with the crowd involvement, with the with the energy in the building, with just everybody locked in, you know, sweating, enjoying it, getting their money's worth. Like I've never, even if I wasn't competing, like I would have just absolutely loved being in that environment. Yes, absolutely. It was just nuts. And like as you guys said, like you could even hear it through the live stream. And you oh yeah. Live stream. Um. So it was just it was just kind of an honor being you know that I was such a huge part of that because. The fans, for once, you know, we they needed that because it's kind of, you know, with COVID last year not having fans and it'd be kind of a slow year this year with, like, kind of just shows going the way as everybody thought. 
it was cool to have that me, me be that mix up and then everybody rallying behind me and in a way not letting the not letting the judges fuck it up you know what i mean it like, was a really exciting show yeah. forcing them forcing them to make the calls the correct calls and compare the right people that you know belong there um you know, and if you you guys watched it, like we that was probably one of the longest posing rounds. Yeah. They they worked, you guys. Yeah, one of the longest things I've ever even seen and been a part of. And like, I just remember standing up there, and that's when, like, after like I said, after with Roy, after hitting those first couple of turns, my confidence went from here through the roof. Yeah. And honestly, like to me, it was kind of over at that point. Meaning, like, I knew where I belonged, and I was going for it all. You know, so it was just that ultimate, ultimate adrenaline rush, and like. I know you guys have felt it, but like, and I hope you feel it to the degree I do someday, knowing that like yeah. I belong here and I'm here to stay. And like, I'm, you know, I am now, you know, I'm one of those top, top, you know, physiques now and I'm going to get this respect. So it was, you know, then it, it turned into like, now I just had fun with it. You know, I was talking a little bit of shit with Hunter and Roy a little bit, you know, <laughs> friendly shit and just hitting poses. And like, I knew I wasn't going to like, so what, what Steve was doing was he was just trying, he was trying to allow Roy to get back into it just by letting us, you know, making us pose for so long. Yeah. But, and, you know, that's what separated me and separated honestly yeah. Hunter too from everybody else was, because we weren't going to back down. You know, we're the next generation of, I, you know, I think bodybuilders, Hunter and I, and like that was, that was showing that we're here and we're here to stay and we will never back down. Um, one of the coolest stories real quick from the whole weekend was, you know, Joey Belt, he's a buddy of mine. He, he had some backstage pass. And, like, the reason I'm called, like, I have a nickname called The Butcher now. I mean, for multiple reasons, you know, I just kind of think it rhymes well, so I ran with it. Also, you know, more on a conditioning side. But he's like, I call you The Butcher because after that pre-judging round, I, I came to the back, and every single bodybuilder was laying on the ground after that round. Like everyone, like, looked like they just got fucking, like, out of a war, just passed out, like, laying down, breathing heavy. He's like, I run back there, and you're the only one standing there just looking for more, man. You're just sitting there, you know, pacing, ready for more. So it's like, he's like, that's why we call you the butcher. And that was one of the coolest stories from the weekend. Um, so overall, you know, like, our goal with that show was to come in and make a statement. You know, we didn't know what to what to regard it was going to be, but we had a good feeling that we were going to definitely be on the map. And as you saw leading into it, Matt said, like, enjoy the show because this is the last time people will ever be talking about you. Um, so then that's exactly what we did. Went out there, made a statement. You know, I decided to shut it down for the year after that because, I, you know, I only had one other option. That was Tampa last weekend. But, you know, where I'm sitting at and, like, you guys have been doing it. But, you know, what I lived through was the process. Um, and, like, I'm always about bringing the next version of myself. So you guys have seen every version. You know, you saw me as an amateur. You saw me go pro. You saw me as a 212 guy. Now you saw me as an open guy. And I think that's huge. And I want, you know, there's going to be competitors watching this. Like if you can present a new package, every time you step on an updated version of yourself, every time you step on the stage, that's going to go very well, you know, go a long ways into the judging because yeah. they've seen you before, but it was a while ago. And now you come out and you shock what you used to look like. And like, you know, that's the reason why bump is going to continue to keep winning this Olympias yeah. is because he's so in pounds and increased every year. As long as he slowly does it, like he keeps, you know, bringing a new version like he'll continue to keep winning. Yeah. And so that's kind of my mindset with this all is I have time. I enjoy the process. I live the lifestyle. So we're going to come out next year, eight to 10 pounds heavier. You know, I'm thinking maybe something earlier, like New York or something. I think that's the next step for me. That'd be a good um, show. And like, and just really come out and like be a favorite this time and knock it out of the park. So I know what I need to work on. And that's where we're at now. You know, I got a guest posing this weekend with Hunter back in actually in two days. I'll go back to Denver and then I'll, I'll kind of go fully into an off season after this weekend. And it's um, like I said, we, you know, what you guys are doing right now is it's back to the work, back to the, the ugly process that you don't show much of and, and then come back next year and shock them again, you know? So during your posing, what went through your head when uh, they moved you out to the side? So, what was kind of, you know, obviously there was a little bit of disappointment right there um, where you're like kind of, hmm. but the thing is, like, I knew and like, I'm very fortunate where I'm at at Armist Pro Gym in Colorado. I posed a lot with Dylan, the gym owner. Um, and like, he, it was funny because during the whole, you know, during all our posing sessions and stuff, he talked about this. He talked about, he's like, hey, you know, Steve's going to do this. He's going to make you do a back double, turn around, do the, you know, the ab and thigh, it'll turn you back around, do the back double. These are his tendencies. 
And he goes, one thing he's also going to do is he's going to test you mentally. So, if, you know, he might just move you out to the side just because to see how you respond, you know, your demeanor, your actions, um, your posing. But he's like, that's, you know, what it is is he's just challenging you as a man. And, like, you need to just continue to work and get back in, into the middle. So though, it was crazy. Like, he got, you know, he hinted at that multiple times, and that's exactly what happened. So, like, when that happened, you know, like, we moved in the middle. Then, like, he brought Roy back out, moving to the side for, you know, the, like, the, either the fourth or fifth spot or third. Um, I knew, you know, I knew that that was a test, and I, I needed to continue to just fight and, you know, and continue to work my way up. Um, and that's, you know, that's exactly what I did. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly what his reasonings were, if that was for it, but I think it was. And yeah, it, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was really cool to like, really cool to like work your way up. And then like, that also goes back into that whole fan thing. Like they weren't going to allow that to happen. <laughs> you know, they were yeah. screaming, screaming at the judges like, hell no. Like, you know, I think even the other, some of the side judges were like, no, like we need to, we need to fix this. We need to give it to what's deserving and we need to, we want to see the best versus the best. Well, and rarely does a up and comer come up and do that well at a show and look that good. So yeah. I kind of felt like they pushed you off to the side just to see how you'd react. And uh, and uh, to be honest, man, you just fought right back. It was really cool to see because when, when I was watching the live stream, when they pushed you off to the side, I was like, "Oh shit!" I'm like, "Am I reading this wrong?" I'm like, "Like, because I thought you were like easily, you know, top three at that point." Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like you said, I think it was just kind of his one of his one of his challenges to the younger guys. And I think I handled it right. And I showed him that I wanted to be there. And then I battled to be there, too, and my actions and in everything from there. So it kind of just shows you it kind of just shows you, you know, don't ever don't give up in these in these competitions. You never know what's going to happen. And then, like, I honestly think, man, like they didn't say it, but I think they honestly rejudged that finals again, too. Like, because yeah, I do know. I wouldn't doubt it. We see after prejudging, like there's still some, you know, some like because that's when it ended. They had Roy in the middle, like next to Hunter. Yeah. I know he's kind of doing it to like bring the fans' interest in maybe a little bit too. But I think like I think some other judges were like, no, we're not doing this. Like we're gonna rejudge again at finals. And yeah, so, judge it correctly. Don't give yeah. it to him just based off who he is. Yep. So that's why it was we had to stay super sharp there. I know I I ended up losing like four pounds during that. You know, just from prejudging four to five pounds. So like, I mean, you guys are sweating up there. They were working you. Walking back to the hotel, like he had, you know, Matt had his wife running, grab me, like just walking back. By the time I got back to the hotel, I had Chick Fil A sandwich and fries in my hand. I had a Five Guys burger waiting up in the room. I was like, he's like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put four or five pounds on right now. And so we just, I ate as much as I could because there's only about an hour and a half window. And then I was like, I'm, I'm good. I can't, I, I'm stuffed. Like we gotta, we gotta digest this. So yeah. it was just like I said. But they came back and it was even a little bit sharper. I think. Like you said, we were sweating a lot. Um, that's something we'll need to kind of work on a little bit. But, like, what I noticed yeah, is, like, everyone was sweating, though. Yeah. And as long as, like, I had a really – I was with, you know, I was with Pro Tan this year, and they did such an incredible job on the tan. You know, she does so many layers that, like, that the sweat almost just turns into a little bit of a glaze. You know, it's not actually, like, running down. Yeah, it didn't look like it was streaking. So I was very – you know, I was very happy with that because I'm someone that we need to keep water in because that's what makes me – you know, because I look – you know – I was, you know, I was full. I was exploding full from all that food, but we needed to keep the water in the, you know, to show that. So what I did is I just didn't drink any more water to find those. So we did, you know, tighten up after sweating all that off. Um, and, you know, I think I just looked just as good as or even better in finals. And that's what, you know, solidified it for me. You got uh, Matt's Pro Tan Grill to come in and do it all? Yeah, yeah. So that was that was a good experience. I had my own, you know, personal lady there. So we came in, she did like three different sessions all hand applied. So that was new. Um, yeah. and it, like I can't say enough about, I've had always used liquid sunrays in the past. Um, and they're great, great company, great ownership. Um, I just wanted, like I said, I want to have my own specific person because she did Nick Walker's tan. And I, I remember yeah. when, the, Yo, uh, you know, what, what's her name? Um, Elisa. Yeah. 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 She's the revive Elisa. rep. Let's see. Yeah. She's, uh, yeah. She works for revive. So too. I've, I've, I've awesome. chatted with her for before. So, like, I knew, like, so I remember during New York, I text Matt while, while the show's gone. I probably shouldn't have. But I go, make sure, I go, make sure I get, you know, Nick's tanning lady. Because, like, his tan, <laughs> his tan was really good. Yeah. Like, and he's just, you know, he's, he's even whiter than I am, you know. So, yeah. like, that's, you know, I want her. And then, you know, it worked out. And, and that really helped me. Um, and then also, 
you know, we just figured out some more things with what we needed with water. And so it's just going to make us better for the next time too. No, man, that was a great showing. Um, so let's, uh, we'll move on to some listener questions now. Since yeah, we covered the Chicago pro yeah, or let's do some. We got so, some, I got some questions specifically for you. And then I just have some questions we all can answer just the, you know, go through them. Um, you already covered the one, but yeah, where did the butcher nickname come from? So like, yeah, like I said, I, just one, this one guy, he grew up around me in Iowa. He's been calling it for me for like the last two years. And I didn't really run with a nickname yet, but now like, I feel like, you know, all uh, bodybuilders have a nickname. Yeah. And so I needed to come up with something. And I, uh, you know, I, I felt that I was suiting just cause you know, the Chicago pro weekend came in there out of nowhere, you know, kind of butchered, you know, kind of, Slayed the competition a little bit. And then also, you know, dealing with conditioning and just being sharp. It's just a cool name, you know, and it rhymes. So I'm that also works I'm also working with that flavor gang now and I'm making a sauce. And like once we were talking yeah, about that'll, that'll work good. What's your sauce? And that's just perfect. So yeah. I couldn't I couldn't not do that. So we got some shirts coming. I just got done with them. Um I'll, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting about them. Um, but I got a really cool cartoon. I know I sent it to Cole. Um really cool cartoon. Yeah, they look good. And we're going to run with this because we like, you know, it's been a lot of fun and it gives me an avenue to focus more on my bodybuilding by like, you know, applying more to that with sponsorships and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to it in the future. Well, I think people will want to buy it just because uh, it's the new guard. Uh, right. All the new bodybuilding fans are watching you and, you know, Ian and Hunter. And I think you, I think you guys are all getting way more notoriety nowadays, which is awesome to see finally. That, I mean, right. you, you guys are good people, you know, so it makes it easy to ra like rally behind and support guys like that. You know, it's it's easy to build a good fan base when you're a good quality guy. So it, it, it makes it good. Yeah. And I think it's time, man. You know, I mean, like these top guys, they're great. They're great guys. But it's been like the top, you know, the same top six, seven for the last, you know, 12. I feel like since I was in high school. Right. Right. You know, with like the Phil, the Dexter, the William, yeah. the, the Rami. And so like. You know, now that with the new wave in there, it's just like it just makes more it's more exciting for you know. I'm more excited to watch the five through ten than I am yeah. the one through five at to see where people or, place now. Or like just more, Olympia. We're just more excited to watch the Arnold. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know that's what. So like, I really want to do an Arnold in these next couple of years. Just be able to like, I think it's really cool, especially with Sergio kind of challenge everybody. Like, hey, you know, this next generation of bodybuilders, let's all get together. Let's all, it's, you know, let's have fun. It's going to be two weeks out from the Olympia. We're going to be in shape anyway, in the majority of you. So let's, let's do the Arnold and like kind of see who's, you know, who wants, who wants to battle it out for the I'm, next. I'm glad year. Nick yeah. decided to jump in. I, uh, I, I honestly thought he wasn't going to. Right. Yeah. I think that was kind of last minute, but I think it's a great decision for him and it's going to make for an exciting, exciting show. That to be super exciting. Yeah. Are you, are you going out to that? Um, We were going to, so we were actually supposed to stay with, with john that week okay. we we're gonna go out early and train with him and he was gonna do some stuff with us um so i don't know if we will now just because that fell through and like i don't you know i know ivana's yeah. not really feeling like we'll see i know i am for the olympia for sure but we'll see about the arnold now with everything changing yeah i know it's a touchy subject but uh, the only thing i could actually think about uh when i heard that was when me and you got to train with them and uh yeah. john john made us do all that crazy jumping stuff that you yeah. know I'm not built for. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was actually looking, I couldn't find one. I must have deleted them where they're on my old phone, but I was trying to find some pictures of that when we all met up and yeah, he took us in that back room and we were doing like jumping drills. I mean, you were like, look at yeah. each other. Like, but it, John said to do it. So we were like, let's do it. You know? yeah, we did. yeah. We killed a back workout. And then he went and put us through like plyo training. We're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, it, was, it was fun though. You never know when you yeah, need that, that skill. Was, Right. Well, I was right. like 270, man. I was like, I don't jump. But. <laughs> but uh, so I had somebody um, ask, and I'm sure that I've actually had like five people ask, how do you and Ivana meet? So we met in Des Moines, where we're from originally, Des Moines, Iowa. Um, I'm a little older than her, so I'm like three and a half years older than her. And so she, you know, I was already living there working, and she came back from college. Um, so because her family was in Des Moines, and I never had known her before that, but she, she, she just started going to the same gym as me. Like, there's only one gym in Des Moines that people went to that yeah. if they or anything or were serious, and that was the Gold's Gym. Um, so we kind of just started seeing there and, sh you know, shot my shot a few times and 
and DMs and she ignored me and I just <laughs> just sent and, and, and it tended to work out. So you got to remember. Was she already a pro when uh, you guys started dating? And that was, it would have been so eight years ago, man. So I was 20, I was 25 and she was 22. So that's pretty crazy to think about. Or seven, seven years ago. Yeah. Wow. Well, that time flies. Totally different breath back then, you know. That's when I was about 100 pounds, wasn't didn't know how to eat yet and everything, and she had to show me the ropes. You may be one of the only people that's ever gone from classic to 212 to open. I think so. You yeah. Know, yeah. There, there might is, be a few yeah. kind of behind me, but I think, you know, at least for sure the most successful, you know. Oh, I, the yeah. most successful, because I've never heard of anyone else doing it. I feel yeah. like not enough people uh, emphasize that when they talk about you. Right. Right. Everyone just sees stop. the success now, and they don't correlate how you got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, I think that was kind of the biggest shock because they kind of came in, and then they then they saw it. They're like, "Oh shit, he's been doing this for a while." And just didn't know it. Well, well that, I mean, and then the if, training if people, training if people watch everything. right. If people watch your YouTube, they'll realize how you got to where you got to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, once you learn, you know, learn what we're about and learn about the work, it it, it, it makes sense. But it's just about and that's why I'm really focused on this offseason. There's just the marketing aspect of everything and really and really blowing this up right now while the you know while everything's hot. Um, getting a good fan base behind me because I love my fans. And then, you know, right into next year with a lot of momentum, with a lot of a lot of support behind. Because that does go a long way in this man. Like yeah. and just you know absolutely. Just, how uh, how's your training changed from when you started to now? From just starting like bodybuilding in general. Yeah, because even when we trained at Edge, I know you trained a lot different. So, yeah, um, uh, just uh, kind of explain how the, what the differences are for you and and how's that how that's helped. I would just say, you know, the biggest difference I've always I've always trained hard and intense because you know that's yeah. what I learned in football. That's all I knew, and I what you know that's what we like to do. It's like so I've always I think I've always trained like a bodybuilder. Um, you know, even Braden, he, he trains like a bodybuilder. He might be a classic physique, but I know he does too. Um, I so got like even, Cole, so. <laughs> exactly. And then that's what, I mean, that's what you're going to do to get that dense muscle, yeah. you know, to get the, you know, the, the full physique. Um, and so I was doing that from the very start, but I would say the biggest difference is, you know, just the things I had to, you know, the trial and error that I had to go through to get to where I'm at today. Um, I have like like I've like I've said multiple times is I've always enjoyed this process. So one of the, part of that part of that was learning different types of training styles, really studying into things. Um, I, I I preached about how I learned a lot a lot from John Meadows and his type of training. But you know I didn't just copy him. You know I, I used his thing. I, I applied some Y three T training. I applied some Handy Ramba Handy Rambod FST training. So it's kind of all encompassed into what, you know, my own philosophies and what I use today, kind of just picking and choosing what I like the most from each, each different, you know, the DC training, different types of styles, you know, progressive overload. Um, so I throw it all into one because, you know, I think each of them, I think each of them have their own, own their own place. Um, but I, I like different parts of all of them. So I'm going to add them in and um, kind of combine the, combine the different training styles to what I have today. I know when uh, me and you first started training, yeah, it was – you didn't train as heavy, but you trained very intensely and very fast-paced. Yeah. Um, and because I remember when we were doing, like, uh, deadlifts or rack pulls, um, you had never gone that heavy before, and you touched the weight, and it moved anyways. I, I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ. I'm like, yeah, he has endurance, and he's strong. What the hell here? I thought I had something on him. <laughs> because uh, – now, uh, though, it seems like you're still training super intense, but uh, you definitely are going heavier with weights right. than, uh, than prior. Yeah, so they, now, you know, with just being, especially in off-season, just being a bigger person in general and having more muscle tissue, you have to challenge that muscle tissue with more weight. So we still, you know, we still do the progressive overload, working through them. I think I just do a really good job of, like, you know, obviously warming up and pre-exhausting the muscle um, on all body part groups and then really driving them into the – driving them into the ground, driving them into the dirt on those main two or three movements in the middle. And then, like, what I like to do at the end is that's when I do more of, you know, the variation sets towards the end, more a little bit more volume, drop sets, rest pauses, um, things like that towards the end when you're more tired. Um, and it's just, I think, 
the combination of all that in those different styles has led to, you know, how my physique looks when it comes to like the density aspect and how the conditioning shows through is, you know, your, your style of training as well. So I think, I think it's just something we have that YouTube and we're, we really talked about really, really explain, you know, why we do things and what we do. Um, and it's continue to work for me. And so, but as you see, I'm always adapting still. I think we all are. We're always adapting. We see new things. We try them. If they work, we use them. We run into the ground. We go back to something else we've done. We bring in the new ones. So it's just always, you know, we also want to make it to a point that we always, we have fun with this too, because we need to enjoy, we we need to enjoy our day-to-day process. So, you know, if we did the same four exercises that, you know, every week for the next 10 years, we know we want it, it want it it wouldn't be as stimulating as if we continue to, you know, adapt and grow in our, in our, in our training and learning as well. Right. So when it comes to training, I had somebody ask this and I, I figured it kind of tie in right now. If you had to choose just one, like one intensifier for a workout for the rest of your life, either rest pause or a drop set, what would you go with? I would go with rest pause for sure. I would, um, yeah. rest pause and you know, that's, when you say that people do it differently, but my rest pause, um, you know, defined is, you know, I usually shoot for like eight to 12 reps at a weight, um, not completely going to failure there, just, you know, really getting close and then you rack it or you, you know, put the weight away and then you rest for 15 seconds. And like, that's just a quick 15 second count. You go back into the exercise of failure, which it usually ends up being like six to eight. And then you rack it with rest 15 seconds and you come back for a third round. And that's usually like five to seven reps. But, I don't think you, you, can, you can't mimic that with any other exercise. It's like, you know, I, I love the concept of giving yourself a little bit of oxygen and a little bit of recovery so you can push yourself, but not enough to actually do a whole nother set. So it, it's not only challenging physically, but I think it's more important mentally because you can like, you know, you know, those are the sets you grow is when you have to, you know, you challenge yourself mentally and you have to push your, you know, your physical state past limits you haven't been, you know, past that failure mark. I mean, that's when you're going to grow. So. They both have their place, but if I had to pick one, it would definitely be rest pause. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'd go, I would go rest pause too. Same, same reasoning. I mean, you can then theoretically get 25 reps with a weight you can only do 10 reps with. Yeah. So, you know, you do that week after week after week. If the nutrition is there, growth almost has to happen. Yeah. And that's something you I kind of did more of, you know, if, if you people are watching our YouTube prep series and coming into the show, you notice like, probably four weeks out we kind of switched our training a little bit obviously exercise selection was very similar but we started doing a little bit more and like I haven't done this in the past as much but I really did this year is like we focus more on those intensifier sets at the end so you know rest pauses drop sets instead of just the straight out you know strong sets um and that comes into you know where you're at with like you know knee knee pain issues you know fat's really low so like tendons and hurting so you have to you know find variations but this year we really ran that into the ground more. Um, and I feel like that brought out a little bit more detail of just, you know, we, we with that intensifier focus instead of just that, you know, that top set focus. Yeah. You got any more questions directly for Brett? Um, I'm just scrolling through. I had like, no one really gotta... cares about Brett apparently on my page. They just want to talk about Ivana. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's savage. <laughs> Um, uh, any uh, any horrible tan stories? I don't um, have. I don't have. Never had a bad tan experience. So no, I, I want to. Have you? You've had. You've had a bad one, didn't you? Cool. Yeah, yeah. You're USA's green. tan masters. I don't know what they're using, man, but I turned green, so it's <laughs> not good. I've never seen that before. My my issue was before this one is like my armpits would always kind of turn like a little bit of a red color. And I hated that. That's kind of why I wanted to change it up. Um, I did do some things differently here. So this year I did do some of that melanotan leading yeah. into the show. And I thought that worked pretty good because it made my overall skin color turn a little bit more tan before yeah. applying the fake tan. And so I had a good base. And I think that actually helped quite a bit. So, did you feel sick at all at any time you took it? Um, a f- like when you up the dose for the first time, like you do. So it's what I would always do is I would take it right before bed. Um, so like it didn't affect me too bad because I lay right back. I, you know, I'm going yeah. to bed. But one time I didn't, you know, I did it a few times right before I went and tanned and I did feel it. You kind of get like a little sick in the like, stomach. It's like, it's like nauseous. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't last very long. The thing is like 
just start a little bit lower and then like slowly increase. But the only time you really get nauseous is when you have like a big jump in like dosage. I found I just need to take a very, very small amount when I do try yeah. that stuff. Um, yeah. Because I, 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 uh, I took the recommended dosage and I got sick every single time. That or I mixed it wrong. Who knows? Who knows? I get dark way too fast. I, I would turn black, I think, if I used that. <laughs> you got um, any more questions, I got, I, I got some. I mean, I kind of know the answers, but I'm just going to ask them anyways. Uh, one of them was, is why did you guys decide to move to Denver? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So this is, and this is applying probably, you know, to you guys and your listeners as well as like, what you've noticed is like Iowa and, you know, probably, you know, Iowa and see you guys there. Oh, left. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah. So Iowa and in Minnesota, what you notice is that, you know, it's not, it's not super deep in regards to the bodybuilding community. Um, what's, you know, we, we don't get as much support as other States. I remember when I was in Iowa that, you know, I had an issue with, Am I frozen on your end? No, you're good. No, yeah. that was me. I got a phone call and my shit just shut off. Yeah, it just it has me frozen right now as my face, so I'm just gonna keep talking. Oh, you're good, you're good. Yeah. Uh, but but with you know, with Iowa, we were almost kind of looked down upon as bodybuilders. You know, like I remember our gym wouldn't even let me pose like in this back room when I would just sneak in there and go by myself. They, you know, they wanted to kick me out, you know. It, they just kind of looked down upon bodybuilders. So it's kind of getting to a very frustrating point for us because we knew we weren't going to be able to grow and market ourselves like we wanted to in Iowa. So it came a time, you know, I was in between jobs. Um, we were at that time living at, you know, Ivana's um, brother and sister's basement. We were in that out from them. And I said to her, I was like, you know, if we're ever going to move, like this is our chance to do it. Uh, so like, if we're ever going to take this risk and do it, we're going to do it right now. So we ran, you know, we had a tet we had a trip set up to go out to Denver because she had just started working with Dylan Armbrust who's the gym owner, and he, he used to coach, you know, figure athletes. So we went out there and visited, and honestly, like, we knew right away that, like, that was where we wanted to be. You know, not only is it, like, I think one of the best gyms in the nation, in, you know, in regards to equipment, in regards to atmosphere, in regards to support, in regards to, you know, athletes in there. But, you know, we loved we loved everything else about Colorado, you know, the outdoor stuff, the, 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 the weather is awesome there, you know, for what we like with the climate-wise. Um, the people we met were very, very cool. So we honestly, a couple weeks later, actually that was, that was like four weeks before I went pro. And so right before I went pro, we decided that we picked a, we picked an apartment complex off the maps and we were like, okay, we're going to be moving here in about three, four weeks. So we loaded everything up and came out to Colorado on a limb. And, and, you know, I, I, I have said this many times before is the best decision we've ever made. And it's, you know, it's turned me into the bodybuilder I am today because of doing so too. So it's a big, big picture of, you know, you, you need to set yourself up and, and be in this, you know, be in the atmosphere, have the surroundings that are going to, you know, going to benefit your lifestyle choices. And like, if you're going to do this bodybuilding journey fully, you need to set yourself up so you're in the right situation. And like, you guys are a great example of that because you are building that instead of you going and finding it somewhere else like we did, you guys have kind of built that yourself, you know, with the den now. You know, you have a yeah. very nice gym. You have, you know, clients coming in. You guys showing that bodybuilding is a thing there. Um, so it's really, like I said, it's been really cool to see you guys do that and create your own environment and still be able to do your, you know, do your family things, do your, where you know, where you came from. Um, and, you know, and you're enjoying it as you go too. And you'll always have those lasting, lasting memories of what you guys built. So kind of the same thing, but mine just like, you know, we did, we did, we traveled and I, I, I don't ever see myself going back. I don't know where it'll end up, you know, because there's some other good places. Like, you know, Texas is awesome too. But for now, Denver is home. And we have, you know, we have, that's our box up there, man. We just go in there. We train our asses off. I have an office right there. It's just the perfect setup for for growing and for being a good bodybuilder up there. And that, I mean, when that gym is, like, when I came out to visit, you know, it's like I can see when when you go out there and you walk in the place where you're like, oh, man, this is it. You know, like I had that. I told you, yeah. like that day, I'm like, "Hey, we're moving." I'm sorry, like, I hope we're not <laughs> attached to family, but but we're we're moving. So, like, the the place, like the atmosphere that they have, equipment is one thing. You know, any gym has good equipment, but you walk into Armbrust, you have 15, 20 pro bodybuilders at your disposal. You know, yeah. so you have 
examples to watch as an up and comer or just as a regular person who wants to be motivated to get in shape, like it doesn't get much better than being in that gym, you know, with all those people in that atmosphere there. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you've been there, you experienced it with, like I said, it's the one you can do nothing but get better there. And that's what it's been a blessing for us. And like I said, I'll always have those memories um, and we'll continue to make more of that right now. I mean, those are deep, deep into prep or you're deep into off season. They're both very uncomfortable. So you need an atmosphere like that where people can, you know, whether relate, um, you know, you walk into a commercial gym, people look at you, you know, whether, like I said, you got diet face or you're ballooned up and they give you weird looks and they're always asking if you're okay. And, and uh, <laughs> I mean, especially in prep, that's really annoying. So, I mean, to have a place like that to train is, is crucial at your level. And like, I had this conversation the other day because somebody wrote me like after I was doing like a top set, um, it was Ross, Ross Flanagan. And he's like, man, I'm so jealous of you that, you know, you can push sets to this and like scream like the way you do. And like, I, I don't obviously intentionally mean to scream, but like we take sets to that point where you have to yell or, you know, or you, you get, you don't even know you're doing it. You're blacked yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, you guys are the same way, but you guys create that environment. So then I started thinking like, okay, so if this dude can only train the 90% of his potential because like he has to watch himself from not screaming on top sets, you know, yeah. it's like, it blows my mind, but that's how commercial gyms are. And right. so I'm like, what is that 10 percentile doing to him? Like in regards to like, he is not reaching his maximum when it comes to training. You know, how does pushing that, his sets far enough? Right. Uh, that top 10% translate to his physique. So, you know, you know, that was kind of a thing that I could, we couldn't do back in Iowa as well. Is it couldn't be too loud. You couldn't have chalk out and stupid shit like that. Yeah. And like, you're missing out on 10% of your potential right there. So, right. you know, it still comes back to you setting yourself up in the right environment, right lifestyle. But, it's, it's such a benefit to be able to train the way we do and do what we can. I, I mean, the proof's in the pudding there, especially for me, because 2018 was my last showing, and I took 16th at Nationals. And then uh, we get our own gym. We're able to push those sets as far as we want. We can do whatever we want. It's our gym. And uh, I show up and, you know, win Junior Nationals. So right. um, that's, that's that 10%. Right absolutely perfect example and then they can go back and look at all those sets that you posted of you you know you doing that extra 10 percent, and then it translates to your physique this year as well yeah 100 percent. so i uh i got questions that are more just uh like we all can answer they're just yeah. generic questions do a few of these um first one i got what would you do if you were not bodybuilding uh, you can go first brett if I was not bodybuilding, I would definitely be in this. By this time, I would definitely be involved in some type of coaching. You know, that's kind of what I went initially went to college for. I, I did exercise science, physiology, and nutrition. Um, but I also got my education degree, so physical education. So I, so I actually got my, you know, I could have been a PE teacher. I could have been a coach right away. But I chose not to go that route. I mean, kind of mainly for money reasons. And I had to, would have had to move and stuff to be a teacher. So, um but I would have definitely kind of went back to that now, especially for like football, just because my love of it. And then also just working with athletes around me. So I know I would be involved that way. Maybe even like eventually, you know, working my way towards the athletic director, because that was always a dream for me. Um, just being in charge of different, you know, the sporting events, everything like that. Um, so that's, I, that's where I would be. Well, you break. I, I could, I could see you doing that though, bro. I could see you being a yeah. football coach. Oh Yeah torturing kids <laughs> uh I, I would probably be honestly i wouldn't think i'd do much different you know, i'd still train clients that's kind of what i was going to school for in the first place anyway it's what i enjoy doing and that's most likely what i would end up probably just sticking to as a full-time career and just train clients full-time i would be a professional gamer 100 percent a game it's my only other love Dude, they, they, you can make some bank on Twitch, so who knows? That might be a side gig. Come up here. I just I need, I need to get better internet. Hey, yeah, I think you need to fix that first. <laughs> um, next one I got here is if you could train with one person dead or alive, who would it be and what would you train? And that one's from Kelsey because uh, she said Braden doesn't repost her shit and won't answer her, uh, her questions. Yeah. And I told her this, but we answered this last week. I thought but, we did, but right. whatever. So we're gonna I'll, do it again. I want to hear Brett's. 
Yeah, Brett, you're first. Um, so in regards to that, the one thing, so I, I have I have actually done done one of those that I always wanted to to do, and I'm sure I'll do it a few more times, and that was the train with Branch Warren. Um, and I got that experience, and it fucking it destroyed. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it was everything I, exactly how I thought it would be. Um, like, he came out to Denver a couple years ago. That was, like, when Gas first came out, just to, they are doing, like, a gym tour thing, and that's when I met Michael. Um, but it was before I was on the team or anything, but – they ended up there like, hey, you want to train with Branch and get video and train back? I'm like, absolutely, you know, but not knowing what I was getting into. You know, I, I thought he was retired. Here he was. But, like, I thought it wouldn't be that bad. But, man, I remember about halfway through the session, like, I stopped and I realized that I, I was either going to puke or I was going to shit. So I, ran, <laughs> I just left him. I just ran to the bathroom. And I went in and luckily I just shit, just shit my brains out because like I just needed to think like stuff just needed to get out of my body. That's that's what like what people don't realize is like that dude just does not stop. There's yeah. no no rest breaks. He literally just flew into Denver, you know, with the high elevation. We started training back and he did not stop. Like we would get done with the last set and I would look over and he was already in the next piece of equipment, like starting the next exercise. So it was one of the, like it was it was a very big eye opener of like how you know how his training was and his intensity and like maybe you know i need to pick up my shit because this is what he does and he's retired you know right. he's still everybody in the ground um so i would definitely say he is like you know he's the hardest trainer that i've ever seen or been you know trained with um he personally says that ronnie coleman is the hardest trainer he's ever trained with so it's kind of cool to see like who he like you know who he looks up to is the only one person and because he used to train with ronnie and they would kill each other um and then now, you know, he kind of passes that forward. Um, one other guy is I would like to train. I would like to do a leg session with Tom Platts um, just to yes. kind of see, you know, just see what I can learn from him. I, you know, I don't know. He kind of trained crazy, you know, a little bit without you – know, he just trained hard and intense and, like, a lot of his shit didn't have good form and stuff. But, like, I would like to learn some of his tricks that he used, you know, with, like, you know, the sissy squats and things like that. But it would just be cool to see somebody that had that great of leg development and, like, their philosophies behind it all. Yeah, branch branch would be wild, man. Like mm -hmm. I could imagine that because then you think too, like that's maybe five, ten, fifteen percent down from his prime. So like, what, what were his what were his workouts like five, six, seven, eight, nine years before that? Yeah, that's hard to comprehend, especially in his gym and his territory with his training partner. I couldn't even imagine sweating. Yeah, yeah. just the everything crazy. I would do a, I would probably get a back lift with Arnold in and Gold's old school. I feel like that would be that'd be top notch. That'd be extremely cool for sure. Go outside, yeah, have to work out outside. We did answer this last week. Now this yeah. is all coming back to me. Um, yeah, uh, well, I'll just reiterate what I said last week then. Uh, O1J, just because that's, you know, that was the heyday. That's what I watched. That's what I grew up with. I would love to uh, hit a back session with him, mainly because my back sucks. <laughs> Those DVD videos were awesome. They, he you know, he kind of started something that, that no one was even thinking, and I'm, I'm so glad he did because we got to see that, you know, witness that. and Just him showing up to that sweet-ass Gold's gym, you know, there on the strip and just fucking banging weights, like, in the middle of the night. And, you know, it was that was a cool experience. And he, he trained a lot different than, you know, a lot of the people that during that time. And um, I tried training him that way. You know, he was doing 30 sets for back, 30 sets for legs. And, uh, man, I don't know how he – I don't know how the hell he does that. Just the amount of food you need to recover from that, you know? Right. All right. I got um, – I had to write all these on my computer and notes because I can't use my phone to look at them. <laughs> um, I had a couple of people who had some training questions. Um, one of them was, if you were going to do RDLs on a second back day, are you going to do RDLs first or last? So, like, uh, I'm assuming this guy is doing hams and back one day and a back on a separate day. So on the hams day, he's throwing RDLs in. Where do you, where do you throw them in the uh, mix? I personally, I would definitely throw them at the end. I would pre-exhaust your back, do the, your entire back workout first, try to get that tired, and then 
that way you can just focus on keeping those RDLs into your, your hams there on the last exercise of the day. Um, and plus I'm, I'm someone, I always do my deadlifts, my rack pulls, my RDLs at the very end, uh, just because I think it's more, you know, going back into your challenging yourself mentally as well as physically by doing them when you're the most tired um, and the most pre-exhausted. And then also it helps it, you know, prevent injuries because you can't go quite as heavy. Like only times I've ever gotten hurt is when I've tried to push myself and only do four to five reps on something stupid heavy. You know what I mean? So that's one thing I've really changed over these last couple of years is like training wise, you know, we, we still lift super heavy, but we save those, those, you know, super, super hard heavy lifts at the end um, just to really challenge yourself a little bit of injury prevention. And also, you know, if you do, you know, you guys experience this as you get bigger is if you do get those low, low back pumps and things like that, you can just be that as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I get uh, exercise induced migraines. So heavy squats, deadlifts just wreck my brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess we all don't need to answer that one. That's pretty straightforward. It's, yeah. We're all I, on the uh, same page. I'm currently actually doing, uh, I am doing two back days with one with hamstrings, but uh, I'm throwing them in the middle because I'm training my hamstrings, then doing an RDL or a deadlift and then doing back. So it's like my transition to back, but I'm doing it pre-exhausted on my hamstrings already. Yeah. Nice. We'll, so, we'll do one or two movements before that specifically for hamstrings. Or when that first got you. Yeah. But I'm also just... Uh, the deadlifts and the rack pulls, I'm not doing them like I used to. I'm doing a full reset and then actually trying to work the legs harder rather than just touching and going and just trying to do a, a crazy intense set. I'm actually right. just trying to work the muscle instead. So yeah. it's completely different. It's crazy how we've, you know, like I said, as we've been doing this and pounding our bodies in the ground for so long, how we change our training. And like you realize it's not all about just like loading it up and just pulling as hard as you can. Like, now we do like, you know, more of a dead stop. So you, you go down, you rest the bar on the, on the, you know, on the rack, then you pull through and say, just bounce it. Like you were saying, like yeah. you, now it's more control, more loading the back and just being more conscious of the muscles and tendon that you're supposed to be using, you know? Right. Like we, we get a little, just getting a little smarter. We were, we were just talking about this the other day. Like, you know, you think four years ago, like I lifted the same amount of weight, truthfully. It just it looked very different and it feels very different than it does now. Like now when I do that same way, like I'm more in control. I can go slower. The tempo, like I have no point where I'm not taking over on that movement versus before I just went from A to B, just moved it from, from here to there. Oh, yeah. I got a couple more here. What is your most useless talent? Most useless talent. Probably juggling. I, I had to learn how to juggle when I was kind of student teaching a little bit. And so I, I had to go through the process because, like, I had to teach the kids. So I had to go through this process of starting from scratch, learning how to do it with, you know, the with just the, the what are those called? Just the cloths first because they float down. And you had to move on the balls and you had to move on to something bigger. And so I really learned how to juggle. And then I was like, they're going to use process to that. <laughs> but good challenge, you know, and I got it done. And now I have something I can – Show off maybe sometimes at, at barbecues. Hey, there you go. It's like riding a bicycle. Then you can still juggle. Uh, not as good, but I can definitely. I got the I got the rotation down when I need to. <laughs> Cole, what do you got? What's, uh, um, I can uh, I can wiggle my ears. That's pretty useless. Not many people can do that. That's a talent. So, yeah. 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 I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the screen. <laughs> mine was i had this infatuation with uh the globe trotters so you know they do all the spin tricks with the basketball like i can do like two or three of those that's my useless yeah. talent it does. with that music playing in the background <laughs> oh yeah uh one more if yeah. your house is on fire you gotta grab three things what do you grab does that, does that include our significant other? <laughs> let, let's say that they're coming with you. Okay, so we're grabbing our cat because if I don't grab her, I'm going to get murdered by my wife. <laughs> we're grab, grabbing the cat. I'm grabbing my my safe. Um, and I'm grabbing, ooh, probably grab my gym bags. You know, that that's important to me as well. <laughs> 
Yes. What do you got, Braden? Oh, man. I got my go bag ready. So I, I grabbed that. That's got all my goods in there. Um, and then I got dog and a cat. So, I, I mean, I'm screwed. I got to take both. <laughs> Does it count them as one? Yeah. Okay, so pets. Pets as one? P- pets. All right. Um, so we got pets, go bag. Oh, man. What's near and dear to you? I'll go gym bag because then I'm pretty much set. I can go anywhere with that. Go bag, gym bag, man. and you, pets. You, I know where your gym bag's at. It's already at the gym. You can't have, grab it. I have another one here. <laughs> I, 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 I think you might like computer in there, too. So, like, computer for all the work you have for clients in the past and stuff like that, that's important. Yeah, I'm going to say laptop. Uh, I get. I guess I have to say pet. Otherwise, my dog is going to get really mad at me. She's listening. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, fuck, what else? Uh, it's my question. I'm not even prepared for it. Right. Laptop. <laughs> dog. Dude, I'm gonna say my Nintendo Switch. I got, I got something to do. You got something to do. <laughs> While you're spending the night in the hotel the next couple nights. Yep, yep, yep. I got something to do. You never know. That's and right. then that's that's assuming that my wife and kids are already out of the house. Right. Yeah, we, we assume that. <laughs> um. So I mean, that's all I got for questions. Um, but, uh, if we guys, you want to just quickly talk about the, uh, Texas pro and, uh, yeah. we'll wrap it up. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. So I'm, it's crazy out here. I haven't been in this, this humidity for a while. I'm sitting outside. I'm just drenched. In. Um, so yeah, the Texas pro this weekend, we got, yeah. you know, that's the reason I'm, you know, big reason I'm down here right now is we're staying in an Airbnb. It's me, Ivana and, and Martin, who's my training partner. So he's competing. Um, getting him ready for the show here, kind of like he did for me. Um, so it's been a really cool experience to like lead him into this. Had a great week of you know final workouts, and honestly, now he just rests tomorrow, and it's game time for him on Saturday. Uh, fortunately, I have to fly back in the morning because I'm doing that guest posing this weekend with Hunter. Um, and I committed to that a long time ago, so we I will take off tomorrow morning, go back to Denver, and do that tomorrow night into Saturday. But you know, I think Martin's going to do extremely well. I expect him to be in that top call out, you know, that top three placing. Um, the, you know, there's going to be some good dudes here. And I think, you know, Ian, Steve Kuko, that'll be a good battle. And I really show it's going to be like a good, it's going to be like a, you know, like a Chicago where it shows like the, you know, some of the veterans, but then also some of the new guys coming in as well. So it's one of those yeah. things I'm, I'll be glued, you know, I'll be busy, but I'll, I'll have my phone out and I'll be glued to that watching, you know, for him. And then also just, you know, Another another show that we get to watch here this year finally and and yeah. you know it's a good competition. Yeah, this one should be exciting as well. Uh, out of curiosity, if you can divulge these details, what uh, how tall is Martin and what's his weight at? So he's he's a little short. Of me, he's probably like five seven and a half. So he's probably an inch and a half shorter than me. And um, I think he he's right at two forty. So he's he's you know little about the same size as me, but a little bit shorter and. He's a little bit more round. He's he's bubbly um, and has deep. So it's just going to be about just going to be about if he can you know bring in that you know peak that perfectly with the conditioning and and then shine. So I'm really excited. To, you know he's been working extremely hard. He pushed me all the way through prep. Obviously I pushed him and and like and we we have we talked about this the whole time. You know you're gonna you're gonna do exactly what I did in regards to you know shocking the bodybuilding community. So that's going to happen in a few days, and I'm excited to see it. And Martin's yes. a pretty young kid too, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So he's only twenty four. So it's like yeah. it's crazy to think, you know, I mean, you know, what's ahead of him. But you know, he he fully committed to this when he was young. You know, kind of like a Jay Cutler thing. Like he was sixteen, he decided he wanted to be a bodybuilder, and he just ran with it. So it's cool to see, you know, someone that young already thriving so much. And he was just he was always just a bigger kid, and now he applied that to bodybuilding. And then you know, it'll be cool to see the, the, you know all the versions of him to come as well. Because the, the exciting thing for me with uh, like with you at the Chicago and then him here is how are they going to stack up next to the bigger guys? Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously you both look great in uh, your training videos and your progress pictures, but then once you stand next to the lineup, 
But that's why I was asking for his height and weight because, I mean, he essentially is going to be somewhat similar to you in size. Right. So I feel like he should do fairly well um, in that lineup because I feel like you could have stand next to Ian um, and hold your own. So I agree. And that's kind of what I'm basing everything off of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, – and then we have is is Phil Fahar the guy who got second? He's yep. doing it. He's doing it. Yep. Well, uh, you got Muhammad Iman or Anam. He's he usually looks good too from Russia. Um, Dorian's doing the show. There's there's quite a few. Like it's not a big list. There's only ten. Looks like ten guys on the list, but all ten of them are are pretty solid. So it's a deep. Show. All, right, all right. I want to know, Brett. What's your uh, what's your top three? Well, I'm going. I'm going. Martin, Steve, and, and Ian. In what order? Who um, thinks winning? Who thinks winning? Martin, <laughs> Martin, <laughs> Martin, Steve, and Ian. Not a boy. <laughs> Martin, that Steve, one. Ian. Martin, Steve, Ian. Sticking with it. I'm excited to see Steve. I am too. Just you know, he's just a bigger guy. You know, being able to see him on stage, he's not competing a little bit. He has to be. I, I don't understand Steve at all. Um, I was listening to a recent thing with him, and they're like, oh, what's your weight at? And he's like 285, yeah. at like two weeks out at the time. I don't know how that's like physically possible. Yeah, like he probably started at like 290. No, he, he started at like 270. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> you know, he, those guys, he grows into it. <laughs> yeah, he, he said he went from 270 to, like, 290, back down to 285, and now he's show ready. I was like, mother. But to be honest, uh, you know Ryan Fulton. Um, this is just my own experience. I've seen him do the same thing. Like, those are crazy genetics. Yeah. I've seen a few lately. I have it. It's been cool because I actually coach a kid that does that now, and he grew into this show, and I he didn't even – we were we were like five pounds from from classic weight to start, and I was like, "Oh yeah, we'll be fine." And he freaking grew the whole prep, and so now I had to make him a super heavyweight bodybuilder. It's insane. And I was like, and he's kind of upset. And I'm like, "Dude, this is like a genetic." That problem. is insane. That's, that's a good. Yeah, that doesn't happen. We're just gonna Not run, me, man. I go. I only go one way. You're on bikini food, and you're growing. You know, what I mean, like, so we're just gonna run with this and see what we can do. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. What about you, Braden? Uh, uh, if you had to man. pick your top three, who, who you got? I got I got Ian coming out one. Do, do, do you have to pick Martin as well? No. <laughs> Martin, I think Martin for sure is top five. I, I would put him in that top five, top six, that first call lineup for sure. Um, but I think between Ian and, and Steve, it's going to be a good battle. Um, I'm going to go with those as the top two. I'm going to put Klahar at third and then Martin four. And then, I mean, fifth is kind of a crapshoot from there. But I think they'll probably end up giving it to Hassan. Just he's done every damn show that there is to do. Yeah, Hassan just can't nail it. I don't know. No. Uh, that's like his genetic downfall is just getting shredded enough to be impressive. The man in person, he's fucking yeah. impressive. Like seeing him yeah, back. I mean, he's massive. Holy shit, like his legs and stuff. And then, like, yeah, yeah, the thing is, is just he has an issue going to that next step in the conditioning. And, I, I mean, who knows what it is at this point, you know, because he's had plenty of time. And it, uh, it sounds like he's been starving him. So maybe it's just when you get that, you know, that much tissue on you, it just – he just needs time to actually bring it down, even more time, you know. Right. And, I mean, yeah. at this point, after doing so many shows – Right. To bring just, that that cortisol, like to get the last little bit of detail, maybe he's just beating his, himself to death at this point. Right. But he wants to, so we'll see. What do you got, Cole? Um, I'm gonna go Steve one, Ian two. I'm gonna go. We'll go Martin three. Oh yeah. Yep. I want. I want to see him do well. I want to see the new guys come up and kick some ass. Um. Be really cool to see uh, uh, in the near future, though, is to get all you guys on the Olympia stage. Yeah, yeah. we're planning. That's, that's what yeah. or, you know. <laughs> that's what that's what I'm looking for. I uh, I text Brett after he uh, uh, after I w witnessed the Chicago, and I'm like, okay, now my new goal is to stand between him and Hunter on stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll do it. You're you're on your way, man. We'll see it. 
Uh, no, it's just crazy because uh, competed against Hunter. I've seen you compete. Obviously, we never competed against each other. But uh, now, now I'm slacking behind, so I need to pick my shit up and uh, and join the ranks here. But you're also and I'm, being- uh, so. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna make Braden go open too. Hey, we'll, I will see. <laughs> we'll see. He's got to get one under his belt, <laughs> right? Like I gotta I gotta <laughs> at least get one of these done, man. All right, that, man, we that's it for questions. Yeah, we, we might we as well. Yeah, we won't go. keep any longer. I don't want you to, to dehydrate out there and sweat to death. <laughs> Hour, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey man, thanks for joining us, man. It's been it's been a pleasure having you on. Yeah, like I said at the very beginning, you guys, we've been we've been a part of each other, you know, in one way or another for the last geez, six, seven years. So it's been cool to watch all of us succeed. You know, we're all gonna be part of this IFBB, you know, for the years to come in the future. Um, and it's going to be fun to watch each other continue to progress. So appreciate you guys having me on and hope we, you know, had some, you know, we had, I had some fun, but hopefully listeners learned something about me, about training and, and we continue to do these down the road. Awesome. Absolutely, man. I'm glad you came on. And yeah, we haven't gotten to chat in person in a while. So this is good. Yes. We'll be, we'll be at the O though. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to have to hit up a workout at the Olympia. And yeah. uh, and then eat even more. Yeah, I'm excited for that because I really haven't. I mean, I'm still I'm like 253 this morning, so I'm only like 11 pounds over my stage weight just because I want I want to look good this week. And I keep telling people I'm gonna go. I'm going round Pretty two. Much. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna have some fun. I, I'm doing a cool little tribute to Meadows. So I'm wearing like the nice the, the um, Ultimate Warrior mask and everything. Awesome. So yeah. Everything. I can't wait to see that. Hell yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome. Right, we won't keep you longer. All right, guys. Thank you very much, man. I'll, I'll right. talk to you pretty soon, okay? Take it easy. Thank man. you. Take care, man. Thanks, soon.